I would highly recommend making sure that you guys write this down because this gets students a lot. Basically, we have fog and golf. That's the way at least the teacher when I was in high school, I remember uh, how he described it. And that's just the way I remember it, golf and fog. I don't know why. There's no L, but I just remember it. So f of g of x. Basically, what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is now you're going to plug in the function. Actually, you know what? Let's do some color symbols. Basically, what f of g of x means is now you are going to plug in the g of x function into the f of x function. Just remember how we evaluated on that quiz? We did f of negative 2. What did you put, where did you put negative 2 in for? You replace that as the, starts with an i, input variable, right? Now you're using a function as your input variable. OK? So, oh, shoot, I erased g of x. Oh, let's call it g of x here. This is red. g of x equals the square root of x plus 1, right? OK. So now, I'll use color coding to help you guys out. So now, we're going to plug f of x and plug it in for g of x. So basically, it is now going to be g of x square root of x plus 1 squared. Does everybody see what I did? Instead of using x, I'm using g of x. I'm replacing the input variable. Instead of with a number, I'm replacing it with a function. And, and the function, g of x, has a rule, which is x plus 1. For instance, if I gave you this. If I said f of 2, negative 2, what would you do? Where would you put negative 2 in for? x. So it would look like this. Negative 2 squared, which equals 4. Yes? That makes sense? All I'm doing now, instead of using negative 2, I'm using g of x. And g of x is square root of x plus 1. So I'm just plugging square root of x plus 1 in for there. So now this answer equals x plus 1. And if I was going to ask you the domain, is there any restrictions? Oh, I erased it. Is there any restrictions on numbers you can plug in here? No. So your domain would be from negative infinity to infinity. Look for those restrictions, the square root of a number or your variable in your denominator. So now let's do f of g of negative 1. Well, guys, if I already, if I already plugged it in, now all you got to do is just figure out what negative 1 would be. And that answer is equal to 0. So you do the operation and then apply it. Right? Now we're going to switch it. Now I'm going to plug g of f, basically is telling us to take the f of x function and then plug it into g. So now I'm going to take what f of x equals and I'm going to plug it into g of x. Okay, So that's going to look like this. Square root of x squared plus 1, ah. which is in reality square root of x squared plus 1. Now, please note um, from radical expressions, you cannot take the square root across addition and subtraction. So that does not equal x plus 1, like the other problem. Okay? You, cannot distribute, you cannot distribute the square root across x plus 1. For instance, like this, 16x squared. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of x, or x squared is x. However, if I said 16 plus x squared, you could not do that as 4 plus x. Okay? You cannot distribute the x squared across addition, only multiplication. Okay? So don't make that mistake. But now we've got to go and figure out the domain. Yes? Wait, can you not do like um, x plus the square root of 1? No. No, you cannot distribute that. You cannot distribute it. Because think about it. Th let's do this. 16 times, or let's do this. 4 times 9. 
Or let's do this, 4 plus 9. You're saying that that answer is the 2 plus 3, right? Well, what's 4 plus 9? Square root of 13. We know that the square root of 13 is not 5, right? So these are not the same. So you cannot distribute across them, OK? You can do it across multiplication and division, not addition and subtraction. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, does anybody remember the rule of our denominator, of our domain? How do we figure out the domain? So now we have something with the square root. What do we do? Does anybody know? Set it. Not equal, but we want it to always be greater than or equal to 0. So x squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So now we solve. And we have i. So that means x, as long as x is greater than or equal to plus or minus i. But guys, actually, forget about it. Forget i. Can we even take the square root of negative 1? Yeah. No. So guess what? All numbers are going to be a part of our domain. Because it's saying all numbers have to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, negative 1, square root of negative 1, is an imaginary number. So as long as you have all numbers that are not greater than imaginary numbers, you're going to have all real numbers. And let's think about it. Is there any number you can plug in for x that's going to make this a negative? No, because you're squaring it and then you're adding to 1. So your domain, your domain in this problem is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. There is no number that makes this negative. That's not going to be a part of the domain. When you set it equal to 0 and, or greater than or equal to 0 and solve, you get x squared is greater than or equal to the square root of negative 1. You can't take the square root of negative 1. So therefore, all it's going to be, that's going to be your imaginary solution. So that means all real numbers are going to be a part of your domain. <sighs> chat, 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 chat. Over here, we're just going to evaluate. So now, if I can just plug in 1 over here, So 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. That equals the square root of 2. Okay. What I'm going to have you guys do is utilize 